Coach, and welcome back to the tutorials on the new features in Sony Vegas Pro 11. These are brought to you by Streaming Media Producer and Sony Creative Software. Now, today we're going to talk about the Render Dialog Box. Every project you work on, whether it's delivered on the web or even on disc, Blu-ray, DVD, that type of thing, has to go through a rendering stage. So there's no getting around it. But in Vegas 11, they've added some things and they've uh, totally revamped the way that it works. I think you'll like it. It's got some neat features, so come check it out. Rendering is usually the last thing you do in a Vegas video project. In the book Vegas Pro 11 Editing Workshop, Douglas Spotted Eagle equates rendering to baking a cake. With a cake, you mix all of your ingredients together, such as flour, eggs, milk, and oil, and you bake it at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. And the cake you wind up with is a finished product and you can no longer extract any of the original ingredients. Rendering is similar in that your audio tracks, your video tracks, titles, generated media, EQ settings, sound effects, video filters, they all get combined together frame by frame to make a finished file. And while you cannot adjust anything in that finished file, the difference with our cake analogy is that with Vegas, you still have the project file you can refer back to and adjust to taste. The format that you render to is completely dependent upon how and where the file is going to be viewed. Some of the most common render formats are for streaming over the web, such as YouTube and Vimeo. Vegas Pro gives you over 20 rendering formats and literally hundreds of templates and presets within those formats. Now in Vegas 11, the interface to those renders looks completely different than it ever has before. So let's take a look at a couple of these things. This is a typical project file here with multiple audio video tracks, generated media, your typical Vegas project file. And so to begin your render, you choose File, Render As, and that brings up our render dialog box. One of our first choices here is to specify the folder where you want to save the rendered file, and then also what you want to name it. And you can either click a Browse button to navigate to exactly where you want to go, or if you've rendered a file in the past, you can click this drop-down arrow, and it'll give you a list of recently used render locations. This is really handy if you're working on a project where you have several renders and they all have to go to the back to a place that you've recently used. Coming down a little further you have all the rendering formats and this is where you would choose the general type or the general format of render that you're going to do. And As you can see you've got a little drop down arrow that gives you some templates and some presets. None of this is really too different from previous versions of Vegas other than the way that it looks in this section here. You'll notice on each one of these presets you have a star that you can select or deselect by clicking on it. This is one of the new features in Vegas 11. By clicking on a template underneath a render type, you designate that as a favorite. For instance, I've created some customized templates here and I want to designate these as favorites. These are templates that I'll use quite frequently. So for example, here's a DVD at 24p. So I'm going to designate that as a favorite. Now, if you'll look up we have a setting here to say show favorites only. If we click that, then what you've done is you've filtered out everything else that you have not set as a favorite. This is a great feature because we typically use the same rendering templates over and over again. And in our shop, we render for YouTube and Vimeo, we render for Blu-ray, we render for DVD, and occasionally we will render for um, Sony MXF Intermediate, and that's about it. So it makes a lot of sense for us to do just the show favorites. Another exciting option that you have available to you are the match project settings. In the project I have currently open, the properties are set to HD 24p. If I open my render as dialog box and say show me only the templates that match my project settings, now the only things that are displayed are the templates and the render format types that specifically match my project settings. This also is a great time saver and a great way to filter out what you don't want to see. A couple more quick things about this dialog box. You have a search field, so if you know you want to render for DVD, you can type in the letters DVD and it filters out everything except those templates that have the word that have the letters DVD in them. With the search render templates box, the ability to mark and show only favorites and then the ability to to sh only show render templates that match your project settings, you've got three really powerful ways to filter out all those uh, hundreds of different different presets in your list. One other quick tip I want to show you today about the render dialog box and the options 
is whenever you are rendering for a final output of DVD but you've started with high definition source material. Something that we have found that you need to do is to click on the stretch video to fill output frame. This will allow for the very slight differences you have in, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the aspect ratio of resolutions between HD material and then a widescreen DVD so that you don't have black bars on either the left and right sides or the top and bottom. Also with a DVD or Blu-ray, if you are going to enable chapter markers, you can do that in DVD Architect, but you can also do it right from the Vegas timeline. If you've set markers in the Vegas timeline and you want those to be the chapters in your program on the DVD or the Blu-ray, click the Save Project Markers in Rendered Media File, and when you bring it into DVD Architect, they will act as chapters. Now be aware, if you have this op option set on your template and you actually don't want that, for example, you've used markers for some other reason in the course of editing the file, and they're still in the file when you come into the rendering dialog box, then make sure you uncheck that so that they actually don't make their way into DVD Architect. Otherwise, you'll wind up with a bunch of unwanted chapters, and once they're in there, it's like our cake. They're baked in, and you can't get them out. I almost always set a region in my projects. Uh, and, that, and I save that in the Vegas project, and that way I've, when I come back to it, I always know what it is that I've rendered. So one thing you can do is, in your render dialog box, make sure you have render loop region only selected in your template, and that way um, it'll only render the, the region that you have specified. And then the last option here under the metadata options is to save project as path referenced in rendered media file. And what this does is it will save the path information about your Vegas veg file, project file, as metadata in the rendered file. What is metadata, you ask? Well, that term comes from the information systems in the IT world, and it basically means that it's data about data. This is a little bit of an advanced topic, but uh, if you're a broadcast house and you keep all of your media assets together and all of your renders and project files in kind of a centralized media server location, it can actually work very well for you. That wraps up this tutorial on the render dialog box. It's a lot of information about one window, but I think you'll agree that some of the options, specifically those used in filtering with the search box, the favorites, and the match media, will help you kind of get control and use just maybe the four, five, or six templates that you use the most often. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.